So I put this slide just to give you a, an idea of the ecosystem in which all those societies are working. So IAMBES is the European Scientific Society. As you know, you have the European Scientific Society for Cardiology, for Pneumology, and all the other branches of knowledge. IAMBES is part of the IFND, which is the Global uh, um, Scientific Society for Biomedical Engineering, which together with IOMP, which is the Global Scientific Society for Medical Physics, uh, they are under the umbrella of IUPS, for which I have the honor to serve as Secretary General. Now, apart being scientific societies, we are people well grounded in the real world. So you have heard from Adriana, Food Society, IOMP, and IFMB are NGOs in official relation with WHO, so we sit in the General Assembly. We cooperate with them, writing those documents that Adriana shows up. And uh, we are under the impression that uh, we could do more at European level in that. Because if we do that on WHO with the United Nations, being part of UNESCO, why should we know that here, since I have to say that European members are among the most proactive in this wide scenario? So we started with Nicola, with Lara. 2015, after we had this first collaboration with the Europe, um, European Economic and Social Committee, together we worked out this document, which is the first in the history of Europe, stating that by me, biomedical engineering is not a subset of medicine, but it's the other way around. We are the number. And then Lara and Nicola kindly accepted to juggle two parliamentary questions, which were tackling the two points which are still on the floor today: biomedical engineer recognition as a profession and uh, biomedical engineering independent space within what it was then Horizon 2020, which is becoming to be now Horizon Europe. Unfortunately, I'd say on a couple of those spaces, we are still lagging behind friends from the States or Singapore, for instance. So this European Parliament group was launched, and uh, I have to say I'm very happy because we already started achieving some tangible results. We defined what it would have been our vision. We decided that we wanted to work on three particular area, areas. Professional recognition, we want to afford and pave the way to an independent area of research for biomedical engineering, and we want to provide more support to the European Parliament when it comes to regulations of medical devices and medical settings. And uh, we would like also to make it clear the point here today that we need an independent panel for biomedical engineering when it comes to basic science. ERC, PET, and Marie Curie, because we are not. We know Horizon 2020 is not discipline focused, it is problem solving focused, and that's fine. But uh, I will show you in a while that we think still this is a problem. That's what we achieved in terms of recognition when we started establishing this group, Nicola. Biomedical engineering was not even listed within the European uh, Commission database for skills, competencies, and occupations. And this was 2016. We should have been down there. We were not there. And no recognition means no regulation. Next time you enter an hospital, ask yourself who is taking care of the medical devices which will be used on yourself, your father, your kids, because that's an issue for patient safety. No regulation, no recognition means no representation. We have not been involved in the latest regulation of medical devices. And my feeling is that it was a missed opportunity. We would have done much better. Thank you, you did a great job. We would have done much better today. Because no one alone can do better than all together. Now we are very happy because I like to think that this is also because of our small contribution, Nicola. But we are now there. We are listed in the European uh, database for skills and profession still under the other engineering, but that's what we inherited from ILO. But things are gonna change also there. So in one year time, you will see that ILO will give a proper classification to biomedical engineers. And that's how we are going there. So Adriana mentioned that Ernesto, myself, Nicolas, and Khalil, we were sitting exactly uh, one year ago in one week in Brazil, and we decided to design this questionnaire, which then WHO has administered, and thanks to that, we now can say that we have now 900,000 biomedical engineers working in the world. Because ILO only provide regulation for employment, uh, which employ at least 100,000 workers in the world. And now we are 10 times this number. We are two in WHO. So kind of, they have no excuse to uh, procrastinate anymore. Still, we have this problem here in the when Fanigo said it very well, when we submit a proposal, we do not know what to choose. We end up being between physical science and engineering and life science. Now, 
You're right. Horizon 2020 is uh, not discipline oriented. At the end of the day, the guys choosing who will be getting funding or not are those sitting in those panel. And believe me, we are not enough engineer according to friends from electronic engineering, and we will never be enough medical doctors according to any of those friends sitting in life science. So either you put in here a panel for biomedical engineering, either we will lag behind Singapore and the States because they do have they have panels for biomedical engineering, they started 15 years ago, and we are lagging behind them now. So is this the direction Europe wanna take? Africa, as we mentioned several, several, several times. Harmonization is key for the African friends, but also for the European small medium enterprises. No harmonization means you will never enter into the market. After several field studies, we have proof that their medical settings are different than ours. Therefore, our medical devices are not safe and effective when we bring them there. So, going to the conclusion, we identified seven key points, seven action points for this group, which we will push forward with your help as parliamentary questions, as letter, as documents, white papers, because that's what comes out from a survey which we took in the past few months. You can see here how many countries in Europe have been involved, and we have hundreds of professional scientists, scholars in biomedical engineering, which are raising their voice, not because they want to be, you know, not because of their ego, but because they believe that's important for our patients and for our economical growth. I remember last year we were two years ago in this room, and I closed exactly with the same letter, which I think is not trivial. This letter said, Mr. Einstein, your application for a doctor has not been successful this time, we feel that your conclusions about fundamentals connection between the impact of time and time and space were more artistic than actual physics. The risk we are going through is this one, that people from classical engineering will think that we are a bit too artistic for them, people from life science they will think that we are a bit too technician for them, and that's where we are lagging in this moment. So this call for action. Grazie Leandro, thank you, thank you Leonardo. Now uh, I 